There's a badge for that. <laughs> Open badges. What's it all? Now, on that first slide, you can see a QR code in the top right hand corner. If you scan that with a mobile phone, for example, that will take you to a whole collection of resources. So there's a free gift as part of this recording. Help yourselves. Debbie and I are both open education practitioners and we're happy to share that with you. And it does work. I've tried it, I've scanned it, and it does work as well. Perfect. That's what I like. That's what I like to hear. So here we are. This is myself, Teresa McKinnon. I'm on Twitter as at Warwick Language. I work at the University of Warwick and I have been part of and I'm still part of an uh, Erasmus Plus virtual exchange initiative where we have been using open badges for recognition of participation. And this is my friend Debbie Baff. <laughs> Hi everybody, yeah, I'm Debbie Baff, I'm on Twitter at Deb Baff and um, I've been involved in uh, Open Digital Badges since, ooh, since about 2014 and Teresa and I have had many, many conversations when we've been talking about our love of badges. Uh, I'm now working for um, ALT, for Association for Learning Technology, as their Membership and Professional Development Manager and um, badges are something that I'm hoping to develop within certain aspects of things that I look after at ALT and build on some of the um, original work that ALT have done, which uh, we'll talk to you about in a bit. Okay, and I've just realized I much prefer you to my washing up background. <laughs> <laughs> but there we go. Every time my son looks at that photo, he says to me, Mum, I really think you need to update you. You don't look like that anymore. I'm like, I like that one. <laughs> a, a mere technicality. <laughs> so what is an open badge? So for some people, an open badge just means a picture, an image that you can put on a website. But to, much more to open badges than that, isn't there, Deb? Definitely. Definitely. And I, I really like these um, these images that um, the lovely Brian Matters um, does. And um, I, I would imagine we've got a lot of these kind of floating around, but it really gives you the uh, the idea of what an open digital badge does in terms of the stuff that the layering that's involved in it and um, how it can evidence various bits and pieces. So, yeah, I really like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So in that there are links that can help you understand this in a, a greater depth but essentially it, it a badge an open badge platform allows you to bake a badge to take an image and bake um, information along with that image that then can generate a recognizable um, credential or micro credential uh, that can be shared on your website or shared in your profile and can evidence what uh, learning you've been involved in. So where did open badges originate from in the first place? Well, funnily enough, they just popped up out of the blue as a result of a competition looking for innovation. And I didn't know this. I, I went off and did some research because I wasn't aware of the, the, where it had, the idea had come from originally. They appeared on the scene around 2011. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, they, they completely missed me totally at that started to pick badges up in around 2014 onwards um, and then found out a bit more about how you can make them anybody can create a badge anybody can uh, share a badge and uh, I then started to get involved in some of the different platforms but when Deb and I have talked about this in the past we've talked about some some of the um, ins and outs of open badging and how over that period of time there's been lots of change and you know it can be great to be an early adopter but also it can bring challenges and I think we've both had experience of that so we decided to do this recording to give you a little bit of a taste of what open badges are and where they come from. Mm, definitely. So one of the, um, a stimulus if you like to the use of open badges was the use of MOOCs multiple oh help me with this one multiple online open courses yeah i think it started like that. 
Massive open massive, online. That's it. Massive. Massive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's various connotations of it, haven't there, with the different types of MOOCs. I think that um, you know they they kind of change the terminology for various sorts of things. But, but yeah. yes, there are. There are all sorts of different yeah. variations on an OOC. But a oh, massive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> an OOC can be a MOOC, but it could be a spook. <laughs> So this is just one of the pieces of research that I came across when I opened badges uh, for their use within my teaching in virtual exchange. Um, and I think it's a really interesting piece of research. You can download it from the links in the resources document, looking at when and where is a good point to award a badge um, in order to make sure um, people uh, are motivated by the receipt of badges. Uh, and looking at what Cross and Galley refer to as a learning arc and the different types of um, points in that learning where it can be useful to award an open badge. So it could be for achievement because you've actually arrived at a piece of learning that is uh, that has achieved something that's recognised by the course leader, perhaps. It could be for recognising effort, but it could also be for recognising taking the initiative and doing something original. Um, and also within their research, they talked about the different roles. Um, and as I remember in open, I think it was OER 15, Deb, wasn't it? When you were doing badge, a badge system for um, OER 15. That's right, yeah. That, that, that was using badges and, and it, it was a, a really exciting for me, an exciting thing to do to go and get these badges when you did a conference, for, for example, because it helped to make you feel part of a community. So yeah. some, sometimes badges are there, not necessarily credential, but as a way, a means, if you like, of association and a symbol of identity. Um, so there are lots of different roles a badge can play within a learning scenario or any um, activity. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and I, I think it's um, it, it differs um, by the individual as well, doesn't it, in terms of the value that they attribute to a particular badge and um, you know it, it's the value is in the value itself. It's not the particular badge. That's what I'm trying to get at, you know. So, absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. And, and, and when we introduced them for OER 15, I think we um, the idea was that uh, it would be so that we could have say, presenters who would maybe present their research at the conference and have a badge that you could click on, which would then go to perhaps the video recording of the uh, presentation that the person had given or maybe link to um, the uh, abstract um, and also taking that further the idea was that maybe we could get some kind of endorsement built into it so that people um, who'd been part of the delegate audience and had uh, watched the presentation and then gone away and used that kind of um, things that they learned from the presentation in their own practice and that was the, that was when I first started to really see the power of these badges and, and how it would be able to demonstrate what people um, had achieved and also what sort of skills that they've been able to do. Um, we also offered them for um, the committee as well because obviously uh, conferences are pulled together, some of these conferences are pulled together by volunteers and it was a way of demonstrating their commitment and allowing some kind of recognition of the sorts of things that they've done as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, uh, very mindful of the fact that you know th these things don't happen by magic, and it's quite good that um, that you also saw the um, the the power of it in terms of connecting. That's a really good point. I have. I really... think it's well. Uh, just as you said that, actually, Deb, I'm thinking. Yeah, it, it, it it's kind of a digital badge gives you the opportunity of making the most of the connectivity that we get yeah. within the online environment. So whereas a piece of paper, you know, would probably go in a folder in a drawer somewhere if I had certificates yeah. for doing this, that and the other, never to be seen again, with a digital badge that connects to the evidence of what I've done and um, show, can be used to showcase my journey and the various things that I've done across my career, um, I've got lots more power built on the power of connectivity. Yes. Built on the way the internet works. So, look, you know, the fact that we can jump from link to link uh, and see these things together, it totally makes sense for the world that we're operating in now. Definitely. 
it certainly started me off on collection of badges um, <laughs> the OER 15 in fact I went to another conference the Mahara conference in 2015 and got a, a badge for that and took part in Octel um, Alt's um, online uh, distance learning or online blended learning activity course that had lots and lots of badges because the beauty of badges yeah. is you you get lots of them some are some are um, just little steps in the journey and some are much bigger steps and then you can decide what you do with them as well. So you can see on this slide that some of these have got a, a globe symbol at the top left hand corner. Those are ones that I've made public. And you can see the third one along has a little locked symbol here because I've not actually made that public. It's just a badge that says that I started week six of Optel. Yeah. Um, and then what I did within that was to earn other badges. So I've, I've sort of deprioritize that one because yeah. yes I turned up that's fine but turning up is only the first part of the journey so it's <laughs> less important for me to show everybody else that yeah. um, so you kind of take possession of your um, experiences and you into your own frame of reference if you like yeah um, definitely. yeah and it, it was that really that appealed to me about using the Erasmus Plus Virtual Exchange Initiative and again there's lots of detail about this in the in the resources um, but this is looking at how we provide that level of recognition and as you can see here this is a European backed initiative um, to encourage people not just to start their virtual exchange journey but to stay on it and to go into it more deeply and to try different activities um, um, that's really interesting, Teresa. So in, I'm not too familiar with these ones. So in terms of the sorts of um, the sorts of evidence that these things might link to, what sort of things would that be for? I'm just thinking that, that, that there's one there that says social circles. So what sort of evidence would that link to? Right. Types of virtual exchange. So a social circle is a very short term um, initiative where people from both sides of the Mediterranean in Europe and in North Africa um, participate in an online conversation and it's a, a conversation on a particular topic but it may just be a one-off event it's very short and and really just a matter of peeking through the window to look at what life is like in somebody else's country and to hear from just a small group of people they're often sort of just very small groups um, so it's kind of a, a toe in the water, if you like, wow. when it comes to virtual exchange. And then when I walk, work across these badges, when you get to the basic training, the tech basic training is actually um, training HEI uh, practitioners in how to incorporate virtual exchange as part of a program within a university setting. Ah, um, right. So. Right. There's quite you know a range of different activities for different, and the open badges, if you like, form a sort of um, a, a trail that you can take and then increase your skills and your knowledge and your understanding so that you can be an effective online perhaps teacher or an effective online participant where you can grow your empathy for people in different settings. You can build your community. That's it. And I, I suppose you, you, you might also see evidence of people having that, uh, sharing that identity. That's what. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's yeah. we encourage people to do that using open badge. Um, but the sort of evidence may, may include there's criteria for the issue of these badges. So it may include actually sort of um, completing a certain percentage of assignments and tasks. It may include making a video or even interviewing um, someone from another country uh, and making that available. Uh, we different consortium partners set their own criteria according to the activity um, and the dem demands of that activity. Mm. Looks really good. It's it's, um, it's been a really useful, although it's it's very new still and it's a new idea for people to get used to, um, but it's been a really nice way of recognising the skills that we're developing and something that perhaps is invisible generally because very often 
these sorts of activities are not particularly recognized on a degree certificate or yeah. anywhere else so it's a sort of an emerging um, area yeah, definitely and I suppose that that fits within the kind of t-shaped graduate type um, scenario with all of the kind of breadth of the various skills the sound of soft skills that people can achieve and it it's a way of um, of evidence in that isn't it so, absolutely absolutely yeah. it is yeah Definitely. yeah I've moved on to your some some of your badges <laughs> tell us about your badges tell us what oh, you've got there's, here. there's some there yes <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a little example yeah, when when you look at these, it's um it's always a, a surprise to me because I sometimes I tend to forget the stuff that I've actually done. Um, but yeah, as you can see on there, there's um there's one for a, um an Eden webinar which I just kind of attended, and that I suppose is a similar kind of badge that you were talking about earlier on with the Octel um sort of uh, checking in type approach. I mean that just evidences the fact that I went to that particular webinar. Um, I mean I've made all of mine. Um, open anyway but um, Bologna open recognition will obviously we may have a chance to talk about that later because I know we were we were quite interested when we spoke the other day about that um, the digital competence one um, was an interesting one that was um, when the when I click onto that that kind of shows that the stuff that I had to do to get that badge which was um, kind of recognition of you know understanding kind of synchronous communication and asynchronous communication and all of that and providing some sort of evidence for that um, and again um, the, the other one there is an open education week um, which is, is a similar type thing that um, that Eden have offered for their their webinar they're really good webinars I have to say if anyone's interested in doing those um, oh, yeah I mean it's it's the thing is I suppose the, the badge pack itself or, or the when you and I first started looking at all of this, we were heavily involved with the Mozilla backpack, which is where we stored all of our badges. And then over the years, then different platforms have emerged so that people can store them in a different way. And that's one of the things that you and I have had conversations about recently in terms of some of the difficulties that we've we've seen um, in relation to uh, uh, how how things are working in terms of the infrastructure and how things are pulled across into various backpacks and obviously the backpack itself is just it's just a way of putting all of your badges into into one place isn't it you know yeah. um, and then you share it on on different ones I mean um, at the moment um, because the Mozilla backpack doesn't it exist in its own form format anymore I've been using the open badge passport um, and uh, th there are a number of different ones available but what it does mean is that when I go back into something as I as I've seen by these things um, it's it's very um, it's a very good way of evidence in your professional development over the years um, and Absolutely. I quite, quite like the fact that it's very visual and, yes. and, and you know because some of the stuff that you do you kind of forget what you've done after a while you do you do um, and, and it's kind of the, the fact that you can you know I, I suppose most of us these days have to do a you know update your CV um, every year before you're official sort of meeting with a line manager or whatever but yeah. often often these little things that you do around what you do you you don't even bother to put those in a cv no. but no. when you collect these you've then got should you should you take a different career should you decide to um uh, demonstrate your skills in a different in a different way if you've got open badges you can curate them in the way that tells the story um, so they become very flexible and a really flexible way of showing your journey and showing what was important to you and, yeah. and I know both of us have done oh you've got more here look <laughs> both, <laughs> both of us have done lots and lots of activities um, where, I, think these, you know, these, I mean this this comes back to what you were saying about the um, the identity with the community as well yes. because I think both of us felt that when we were doing these bring your own device for learning um, badges we really fell part of that community and it's almost like it got, it gained its own momentum with people yes. kind of gaining these badges um, and I 
I really like the fact that um, because the bringing home device for learning was built around the um, the, the five C's framework, wasn't it? Uh, the four C's framework, actually. Yeah. Um, and you could create, you could uh, gather a badge for each particular one. So the creating, the collaborating, curating, communicating, and when you um, when you click on those badges, it kind of takes you to the work that we did for those particular ones. And it, it's a really um, a really good way of demonstrating your uh, your commitment to collaborative learning I felt yes um, yes and then um, I just noticed the one on there which I'd forgotten about which is one that you'd created which is the open badge HE one <laughs> with the well, yeah but that image that image actually was shared by uh, well created by Kevin Mirzo uh, Kevin Kevin who, at Mirzo at K Mirzo on on Twitter um, he created a little suite of o OEP and open educational practice badges and they are they are brilliant. The visuals are lovely. Um, so you know, there's there's kind of a, a community here of people um, wanting to share their skills and using their skills to contribute to um, a, a, a wider um, purpose. Um, I wonder so, if we yeah, get chance, coherence there. I was going to say if we get chance a bit later on, it might be good. We could. Um, one of us could click on our badges and show how it clicks through to the various uh, evidence, uh, which might yes, be useful yeah. to people to have a look. Um, I noticed you've just popped onto that slide there. The I popped onto this one because Alt C. I'm, I'm an editor on the Alt C blog, which is um, a, a community blog where people share their experiences of learning technology for the Association of Learning Technology. Um, and everybody who writes for it um, gets a contributor badge. Um, and again, I think that's a really nice thing to be able to, to hand over to people when they've gone through the process of submitting something and sharing something they're doing at their university or wherever they, they work, um, as well as getting that online and publicly viewable so that they can share the knowledge with a wider community, they get recognition for contributing to that community. Yeah. Um, I think it's really nice that you've got something that take away from something that you know you perhaps didn't think much about doing you, you know you 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 wrote your piece and then thought that was over and done with but in fact you've then got a trail a paper trail if you like but a, a digital trail um, of what you did that links back to your evidence and of course the, the advantage with it as well is that um, you can share that because they're open digital badges and they they have an infrastructure that allows you to share them on multiple platforms then um, you can share it within your own blog and you can also put it on things like LinkedIn. Um, I mean, that it, it just, it's more of a rich picture, I suppose. That's how yes. I see it. Yeah. And that's, that's a really, that's a really good way of putting it. We, I thought, I thought we'd include a little opportunity for people to earn a badge if they wanted to give it a go. That's so there's a QR code there that I think both Deb and I have done already. Seeing as we're socially distanced, but it hasn't stopped us working. It hasn't stopped us um, achieving what we wanted to achieve. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got a badge for that. Excellent. So, Nate Otto created this one. You can uh, scan the QR code and apply for that badge to say, actually, yeah, you know, we're we're carrying on regardless of COVID-19. So why not pick up your own badge and try it? Um, set up your own uh, space, as Deb said earlier, for uh, collecting your badge, putting them together. It always used to be the Mozilla backpack, but as Deb mentioned, that has gone. So there are state, there are places, and I'll name a few of them. Uh, but you've got links as well through the uh, badge wiki uh, that we've shared in the resources. Um, Open Badge Passport is one that both Deb and I have used. Badger is another one that you can use um, as a platform. All the platforms are actually listed in that badge wiki link that's on the resources. So there are lots of different ones you can try out. And they, uh, they work on the same underlying infrastructure. So as Deb said, you can move things between platforms, try a few out and see how they go. Um, I mean that that wiki that that Theresa mentions there is um, it, it 
we created it as a community, as a uh, people who are interested in badges in, in HE and also wider than HE, wasn't it? Mm, absolutely, um, yeah. And it's a really good set of resources um, that kind of give a bit more detail about the history of badges and, and kind of how things have been brought together and there's various aspects to research and what have you on there. So, yeah, really, um, really good place to have a look at, which I think you've you've said you've included in, in the links, haven't you? That's so, right, yeah. yes. Did we include the stuff that we did on the, um, the conference? that we worked on, Teresa? I, I did, yeah, there was a link Open Badges HE, so there's hashtag Open Badges HE. Really? Um, but, uh, yeah, there's some, some information there. Where, actually, we wrote it up for um, for the Alt-C uh, journal, so there's a link there to the um, Alt-C uh, publication uh, really? that actually sort of talks you through what we did, where we actually, we made, uh, I know we had lots and lots of fun doing this conference, but we <laughs> made lots of physical badges as well as digital badges. Uh, the, the fabulous thing that sort of kind of came out of, of um, Southampton Uni um, some years ago now was, was the, um, uh, the shared interest in recognising things that currently go without recognition. Yeah, definitely. Um, and there, there was something like 130 um abstracts that we had for that yeah which yeah, was, it was phenomenal really and that was back in 2016 i think that's right yeah yeah, yeah it's a few years ago now and uh, but there's a lot of resources there um that can take you through just how open badges can be used um i think these three points really were just things that i felt we could pass on to people having yeah. used and been recipients of open badges for uh uh, for quite a while now. There's a little form that you can download as well on that resource pack that we shared at the beginning um, that gives you some ideas about where to start if you were to design a badge. So if you recognize a skill or a, um, a competence or a, um, something that you feel should be recognized through a badge, it actually talks you through, you can download a little PDF there that was shared under Creative Commons license, talks you through the things that you need to think about before you actually get to the point of choosing your graphic. Um, so there's a form there that I think might be useful. Yeah, definitely. And, and particularly if you're thinking of doing, um, you know, the micro credentials that lead towards an end result, um, that's a really good way of, um, of, of getting the overall picture. And it, and it kind of it, it concentrates your thinking, I think, yes. when you're designing. Um, and, and I think those two, uh, those last two points are important in that um, you have to think not just about, you know, your design, but also how is your design perceived by others? Definitely. Did, did, did your badge work? Did it achieve the desired result? Um, how can you involve the badge potential badge receivers in the process. When I went on Twitter and said, could somebody do me some sort of images that could be used in an open education, open education practitioner badge, for example, I didn't expect Kevin to step up and as he did and, <laughs> and just produce those fabulous pictures. Um, and there are some amazing talents out there. And if you can involve your community in actually creating something that it, it already is a share for Definitely. communicating a skill. I mean, um, I am um, thinking of that. I did some uh, very small scale research when I worked at Swansea University um, into the implementation, uh, implementation that we did for um, open digital badges. And some of the stuff that came out of that research was that actually the, the, the design of the graphic of the particular badge was incredibly important. Um, and some people, you know, really felt that it it, it was important that it really reflected what it was. Um, and it was interesting for me because I suppose I, I had kind of naively selected icons that I thought would represent what that badge was. And I kind of learned then that, um, you know, by involving people in that particular design aspect of it, I was I was able to get a badge that was more 
more kind of specific um, for people's needs. Um, and then when we did the um, the next iteration of those badges, I took that into account and changed things based on people's input. So yeah, that's really good. I think design, particularly, um, I'm thinking a few years back when I was involved with um, some students who were on placement with us and I wanted to give them a badge to evidence their work involved in a project and um, basically to to evidence it was a real life project and the sorts of skills that they'd um, they'd kind of gained through working on that with me um, and um, it would have been useful if, if I think if I'd uh, the benefit of hindsight it would have been useful to get them involved in the design of the particular image for that badge at the time you know so yeah I think that's an excellent excellent point Teresa. Very good. So it's certainly I, I didn't realize that you'd done some research in that area because that was that's really interesting the in the implementation of, of badges into virtual exchange uh, and people's perception of those badges really pointed to the importance of the immediacy of the badge and yeah. you know when at the, the, the point at which the badge is awarded the closer that is to um, the submission if you like of your um, achievement yes. and the, the completion of that achievement that can be as well for the awarder and for the awardee um, that you know something happens very quickly as a result of something you've done or you've uh, contributed um, and that helps that level of immediacy and I'm sure I think we can all recognize that actually those people who are very familiar with being in online environments immediacy is important yeah um, uh, it gives us the impetus if you like to go further and to do mm. more Mm. Oh, another, another one of so Brian. Another one of a wonderful <laughs> which is featured on the community. Um, we've got to give some shout outs to people, I think, here, haven't we? I mean, Brian clearly um, has, has been very helpful in terms of uh, visually communicating um, quite complex ideas and, and um, inspiration. Um, uh, Doug as well. We, should, we must give a shout out to Doug. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. And, and I, think, um, I think it was Doug that um, that I originally heard the idea about the baked in data from, where yes. he talked about the um, it's like baking a cake. So you have all the ingredients put into the cake, and then once it's baked, you can't take the ingredients out again. You can't separate them out. And that was a really good way of explaining badges to me. So yeah, Doug is. Um, bit of a uh, I'm a bit of a fan girl for Doug so <laughs> I will give him a good shot Bobby as well and Petrina yes. they, they yes. were very much active and Anne Hall as well very active in the Open Badges HE um, activity that we did wow. um, so there was a barn a barn raising I'd never heard of barn raising but I have a badge for barn raising now so oh, I know no. all about barn raising we did a community <laughs> barn raising to make badge wiki so if you <laughs> <laughs> if you Google Badge Wiki, you'll find everything the community wanted to do badges and uh, lots and lots of useful information. So you can open that particular jar of goodies by following the link from the QR code at the beginning of this uh, presentation. Let's jump into some of my badges and, and maybe have a little look at um, the evidence that we've got. Oh, yeah. just so there's well. hundreds of them so there's a barn raiser badge um, so maybe if we take a look at this one which was from Jenny Heyman which was a, an open education badge um, you can see here that there are criteria for this badge and it shows me that the badge is validated by the user that's part of the system and the criteria here to have a nice visual and something that yeah. conveys um, more than simply um, the activity that we did. It's really good. I, th I think that, um, you know, and particularly your point about it doesn't necessarily have to be, um, you know, a heavy duty thing as well. It can be a, um, you know, a, a connective point of view. That's your, your Mahara presenter. So does that, that was a presenter more? one. Yeah, well, it just links the creator puts yeah. in at the time so in that case it, the criteria were just basically sort of explaining but then I still have my links to the resources that I presented as a presenter there anyway yeah but once it's public you can share that or embed it you can um, 
make your story. Maybe it's worth showing people as well the pages that um, the system has, because both yeah. both of us have explored those a little bit, haven't we? Yeah. Um, so you can, within the tool itself, you can create a page. Um, and these are really nice ways of just pulling together um, a little bit of text and contextualizing a badge that you've got and explaining a little bit about where you got it. Uh, but they're all clickable, so they're all, if you like, uh, easy to validate. Um, and, and this also has the facility, doesn't it, for the endorsements? I think you can request yeah. endorsements on. You oh, can. Passport. Yeah. Absolutely. And you can export these as a PDF. So if you did want a, um, a paper version to uh -huh. print off somewhere, you could do. Um, but clearly, when you do a PDF export, that links to a QR code. It's a QR code that's used to show your badge. Because as we said right at the beginning, a badge is not just a graphic. A badge has lots and lots of information in it, but that information, in order to access it, you need to be online. Yeah. So you'd scan a QR code and go and see that. Yeah, definitely. So I hope that gives a little bit of a taster. That's really folks. helpful. 